break this all down, shall we? With me now is Dan Pfeiffer, CNN political commentator and former senior advisor to President Obama and Matt Schlapp, Donald Trump surrogate and former George W. Bush political director. Welcome to both of you. Thank you. Good to be here. Do you feel the excitement? Oh, yeah. I feel the fatigue. <laughs> Do you feel the same? Oh, absolutely. <laughs> what do the candidates feel like on this day? One last day to get their message out. I mean, they are... Uh they're exhausted, right? They have been going at this for two years. It's, it, they're basically an autopilot. But you, what is keeping them alive and keeping them awake is the same as keeping the staff awake, which is the they can see the finish line in the, in the enthusiasm they're going to feel from the crowds and every the, every stop they have today. Is it possible for them to, to sleep at night? Because I would just be... Th- from- <laughs> yeah, well, first of all, I worked for President Bush, and he liked to be home. He used to stay sleeping in his own bed <laughs> with his own pillow. Uh, and it was unusual for him to remain in cities overnight. Donald Trump just seems like a rock band to sleep on the plane and get ready for the next <laughs> event. And the stories you're reading says he's one of these people like Mitt Romney who doesn't require that much sleep uh, and is very energetic. And this is what, you know, Bob Dole did this in 1996, where he just campaigned continuously the last 24 hours. And I think what you're seeing from Trump is something similar. And it is unusual to, to be that aggressive in the final stretch. And it plays into his strength, which is this enthusiasm gap between Trump and Clinton. The Trump supporters are very excited Mm. about going over there because they've lost twice, right? They want to win. We want to win. And uh, for Hillary Clinton, you know, it's just more methodical. You know, (laughs) not quite as much love there, but, uh, you know, she's up in a lot of polls, so I think they feel good about their chances. Okay, Uh, and and early voting, I'm going to talk to you about that in just a second because those voters are certainly jazzed supposedly about Hillary Clinton, (laughs) right? But I want to head back out to White Plains because Breonna Mm -hmm. Keeler was taking part in that huge giant press conference that Hillary Clinton threw at the last moment. So, Brianna, what did we glean from that? Well, she's certainly very ready uh, for this to be over and to be going through this final day here. I'll tell you, we're being ushered onto the plane, and you can see Secretary Clinton as she's getting on the plane. I'm actually going to take you on the plane with me if I can, Carol. We are totally flying by the seat of our pants here as we try uh, to get out of White Plains. But we have four stops today. We're going to Pittsburgh, and then we're going to Grand Rapids. Again, let's walk this way and we'll head on to the press section of the plane. We'll be going on uh, to Philadelphia where Secretary Clinton will be campaigning with President Obama and First Lady Michelle Obama. And she's going to end her night in Raleigh tonight in what has been really just a nasty, fast moving, unprecedented uh, general election campaign battle. Now, you talk to uh, officials here. I'm just going to go to the side as we get everyone on. Uh, You talk to campaign officials. And it really comes down to their get out the vote efforts in their ground game. And they're feeling very confident about it. They're looking at early vote turnout. They think it's giving them uh, the advantage. But of course, polls have tightened. So there's this anxiety about can anything happen uh, going on. Uh, Carol, I'm going to toss it back to you because we're here at the end of the press line getting onto the plane. Okay. Yeah, and I wouldn't want to make that large Secret Service man angry. <laughs> so, Brianna, we'll let you get on board that plane, and we'll check back, in, back with you when you, when you arrive at your destination. Brianna Keeler, many thanks. So let's talk about early voting, right. because in states like Florida and uh, North Carolina, mm-hmm. there was this huge surge of Hispanic voters turning out. What does that tell you? Well, I think it shows that there's tremendous enthusiasm for Hillary Clinton. It means that the Clinton campaign is running a top-notch field organization. They have basically won Nevada before Election Day. They put that in the bank. That's a key Trump state. It's one where his name, <clears throat> his name's on the building. It's really key to saw any path of 270. They've won that. Florida is in great, in a better place now than in 2012. And it shows organization and enthusiasm, which are the two elements you need for a successful presidential campaign. So... Clinton supporters keep talking about organization, organization, organization. You don't hear that so much from Trump supporters. Actually, uh, as Dan knows, the organization's done by the committees and these victory committees, both for the DNC and the RNC. And the RNC has taken the lead and actually had more people and more offices on the ground in these battleground states than in any previous election. I think our high water mark for a ground game was 2004, and we're going to see how it do this time. I think the key on the early vote is as more people are voting early. And, uh, and Democrats tend to do better on the early voting than Republicans. We tend to do better on Election Day. So people are assuming that just because so many more people are voting uh, early that those trends will keep up on Election Day. That's the big question. We don't know if they will. We also don't know what the turnout's going to be. And then with Donald Trump, there are two things to his advantage. He does have a huge enthusiasm gap, 10 points. Uh, he also has people, let's face it, 
who are going to vote for him, but they don't want to talk about it. They don't tell him pollsters. The secret and this Trump is, yeah. do, you, do you think there are some? Do you know any? <laughs> I, most people I know know some. And the question is... Most Trump supporters I talk to are way out with it. Well, let me, let <laughs> They're me, not shy. Uh, let me, the, but this is the question. On Election Day, it is a pain. I had to wait in a long line to vote early. If you're enthusiastic about your candidate, you'll do anything to go vote. If you're less enthusiastic about your candidate, life is complicated. Sometimes things come up. That's why that matters. So, so Donald Trump has... Um, he sort of called into question those long lines, right, and called into question that elections officials decided to keep the polls open to accommodate all those people who wanted to vote. Why do you think he's doing that? I, mean, I have no idea why Donald Trump says the things he says. I think it's deeply irresponsible. In many cases, he's accusing re- states run by Republican governors of rigging the elections for Hillary Clinton, which seems unlikely. We have a tradition in this country. John Kerry did it in 2004, Al Gore did it in 2000. John McCain and Mitt Romney, when they lost the election, they conceded and tried to bring the country together. You know, and Al Gore had a case to make. I was going to say, yeah. Al Gore, I wouldn't go with that. He made, no, he made his case. For a long time. For a long time. Yeah. He had, it was a state mandate. I was there in Florida. That was, was a state, mandated, re- yeah, yeah. state yeah. mandated recount. But he made his case after the election was but over. But then, was the first yeah. thing, and what the first thing he did was, after the Supreme Court made its decision was concede to President Bush, help bring the country together. The question is, is Donald Trump going to take that responsible position. Everything he's done this campaign suggests no, but hope springs eternal. So if he does lose, will he gracefully concede? Absolutely. Or will he absolutely. But I think, like we all know, we're going to make sure that the results get the proper... In some of these states, the polls are awfully tight when you look at the battleground states. Some of them show... Many of them, five or six of them, show a one-point difference. Some of those states require a recount. That should happen. Uh, 2000 was unbelievable. I think Al Gore went too far in pursuit of this, and I think it actually hurt him. And I actually think the bad thing about that is it hurts the president who comes in as well. I do think we have to get through this. I also think it's wrong uh, for uh, all of these court cases that are going on at the last minute. Let's simply follow the rules. You know, I was in line on Sunday to vote, and I was surprised how many people were in line. It's a great thing in a actually. I want everyone to vote. And you know what the election officials said? When the time came, he said, everyone who's in line, we're going to make sure every one of you votes, no matter how long it takes. That's a fair interpretation of the rule. I was totally fine with that. Where it gets strange is when you have the Ninth Circuit coming in and telling Arizona that they have to change their voting laws at the last minute. When they tell people who are trying to have clean voter files that they can't do that, that they have to keep people uh, who shouldn't be voting on the rolls. That's where it gets funny. And I think that's where people start to think, do we have a really good system? I, let's just follow the rules. I'm for everybody voting. Right. Well, I mean, you may be. A lot of your party is not. That's not true. That is absolutely true. Change, not changing true. the rules in North Carolina, Ohio. North Carolina just documented evidence of getting rid of Sunday early voting because those are in, because a high percentage of African Americans vote on that day. That has been that has been a tried and true practice of the Republican Party for many years now. No, I, I just completely <laughs> reject this. I think the fact is is this. I think we ought to have laws and we ought to follow those laws and we ought to, we, ought, we shouldn't break those laws. <laughs> just because uh, it's near Election Day. Let's follow them. By the way, in a lot of these states, elections are controlled at the state and the local level. So a lot of these places where we're talking about, there's Democratic elected officials as well. And let's just follow. I think people look at this process and they say they want it to be transparent and they want it to be fair. And that's what I want. But but the good news is they're they're just no evidence of widespread voter fraud in any you know, you know, Carol, election. he just said he went to Florida for the whole month. I assume I went for the whole month. Why did we all go? We all went because when races are close, it comes back down to the subjective opinions of people on the ground. And we all know it, which is why we send operatives. But that's why both parties do. And if this race turns out to be close, it's important that both parties and both campaigns are represented throughout that process so that people feel like the voting process has integrity. And they there have is, been through history, right? There right? is a difference, though, between state-mandated recounts. If, an, if a race is so close that the candidate, either a re, um, recount is mandated or the losing candidate has the opportunity to call for one, that should absolutely happen. should absolutely. follow in all the rules. There's a difference between that and su- suggesting that there is voter fraud or calling the re- calling things rigged if there is absolutely or, or doing what the Ninth Circuit did, was changing Arizona's laws at the very end where the Supreme Court had to intervene and say, no, Arizona gets to set its election laws. All of that is wrong. All right. I've got to leave it there. But the important thing is go vote. That's Please right. go vote. That's right. Because that's, that's right. That's what makes our country so great, right?